uh, we start the talk, I would like to, to say uh, just a few words regarding uh, uh, Samuel Ruiz's uh, bio. Uh, well, he's going to present to us, as you may read from the, from the screen, analysis of the effectiveness of meteor meteorological models for wind energy applications in Cuba. And uh, Hector Samuel uh, Ruiz is a renewable energy engineer from the National Autonomous University of Mexico. And he specializes in uh, wind energy, specifically in the area of wind um, uh, resource assessment. In his undergraduate thesis, he developed a reliable and low cost wind, wind measurements, measurement device. Currently, Hector is a graduate student in of the Master in Energy Engineering at the Institute of Renewable Energies of UNAM, where he is developing his thesis topic within the uh, Wind Energy Group. Hector also dedicates part of his efforts to promote Solar for It, a small company he co-founded that seeks to reduce food waste and support Mexican agriculture. Very, very interesting. Um, um, bio. Um, so, um, uh, Sam, uh, yep. uh, are you still there? Because I lost your, your screen. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I prefer to know uh, to run my camera because my internet connection is limited. Uh, my younger sister is taking her classes on time now, <laughs> and my other sister is doing home office. So, <laughs> sorry for that. No, no, it's okay. So uh, just if you can show us your screen and go ahead with the presentation, please. You have uh, 40 minutes to, um, to, to uh, make your presentation. Thanks. Yep. Uh, can you see my screen? Now? Yes, yes, we can. Yeah. It's not in, okay. in the yeah. uh, full screen mode, but uh, yeah. we, we can see your presentation. Okay, okay. there we go. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Ramos. Well, hello everyone. Good morning. My name is Hector Samuel Rusegoviano, and today I will present you my thesis project developed through my master's studies. The title of this presentation is Analysis of the Effectiveness of Reanalysis Data for Wind Energy Application in Cuba. And this project um, was carried out under the supervision of Dr. Carlos. Lopez Villalobos and Dr. Osvaldo Rodriguez, and also with the collaboration of Dr. Ernesto Joel Fariñas Wong, researcher of the Universidad Central Marta Abreu de las Villas in Cuba. Well, the content of this presentation is as follows. First, um, I will give a brief description about the background that gave way to the elaboration of this work. And after that, uh, I will mention the main objective of this work. Uh, next, I, I will introduce some of the basic concepts about wind energy that were applied in this work. Um, also, I will mention the methodology and I will show you the results obtained. Finally, I will mention the conclusion reached after all this work was done. Well, mm, let's start. The current climate crisis calls for an early transition to low carbon energy sources and renewable energy are a real option, which is, which is why many countries are increasing the participation of this type of technology in electricity generation. Cuba was not left behind, who recently proposed the, to increase the participation of renewable energies by 2030, being wind energy one of the planet to have more participation. So Cuba has already started planning and implementing wind projects in the country. So having information on wind conditions will allow to identify um, validating potential wind generation sites. Uh, on the other hand, we use the use of reanalysis data for wind energy studies has become in a popular popular in recent years. Uh, reanalysis can be defined as the hybrid data set that use observation and forecast models. Uh, so climate reanalysis combines past observations with 
models to generate consistent time series of multiple var climate variables that provide a comprehensive description of the observed climate over the past decades in three-dimensional grids. Then currently there are different reanalysis datasets. However, among them, ERA-5 stands out because it provides information on climatological variables from 1979 to the present. Uh, also, the, the, the data have a temporal resolution of one hour and a spatial resolution of approximately 31 per 31 kilometers. Uh, also, it provides information about wind, wind speed at uh, 10 and uh, 100 meters high. And the, um, the use of RFI uh, um, has shown better results than other analysis data sets using wind energy studies. The, despite all this, reanalysis data may overestimate uh, or underestimates the available wind resource at certain studies do issues related to low number of observation, use the complexity of the orography, model simplifications, and um, well, therefore their performance is a function of the, the site to be evaluated. So in order to continue with the developing of wind energy in Cuba and to test this type of tool, in such a particular environment as an island. The objective of this project was to analyze and evaluate the effectiveness of ERA-5 and analysis data for wind energy application in Cuba. So in order to carry out the above, it is important to first introduce some basic concepts. Uh, a wind turbine is a machine that covers the kinetic energy of the wind into electrical energy. Each wind turbine has a, a power curve, which Thank indicates the, the, the relationship between the power generation according to the wind speed. So each wind turbine has a different power curve. However, is, it is possible to identify three, three main zones. First, the, the wind speed, the good in wind speed, is the speed, uh, the wind speed at which the wind turbine begins to produce energy. The rated wind speed is the speed at which the wind turbine produces its rated power. And the cut out wind speed, which is the speed at which the wind turbine is disconnected and stopped for safety reasons. Um, on the other hand, the EEC 61401 standard, it is possible to differentiate four classes of wind turbines. The class one, two. Um, Sam, are you still there? Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? E yes, yes, we can. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, I lost my internet connection. Okay, yeah, never mind. Okay, just carry on. Thanks. Um, I don't know where <laughs> was the last part that you heard me. Um, you were explaining this uh, this slide. Ah, okay. So, um, in summary, we can say that class one wind turbines are designed to operate at high wind speeds, while class three wind turbines are designed to operate for low wind speeds. Now, um, a dimensional parameter used to know the performance of a wind turbine is the capacity factor or CF. This can be defined as the radio of the real power production, EW, uh, and the real power production of the wind turbine, PR, in certain period of operation, uh, YH. This parameter indicates the fraction of the time that the wind turbine operates at its greater power. Now, uh, in order to achieve the proposed objective, we had measurements of wind speed and power output of the wind turbines of Hibara One uh, wind farm. This wind farm is located in Cuba. 
Um, as we can see in, in this figure, this wind farm is located in the province of Holkin, a few meters from the coast, and it consists of six wind, wind turbines, uh, model Gamesa, uh, uh, um, of 850 kilowatts uh, nominal power. This wind turbine uh, have this, this power curve, and in this power curve, we can see that this uh, hydro generator, uh, wind, speed, uh, wind turbine, sorry, uh, has a good in wind speed of four meters per second, a radar wind speed of 16 meters per second, a good out wind speed of 25 meters per second, and it corresponds to a wind turbine of a class one. That it is a, a wind turbine that is decided, decided to operate uh, at high wind speeds. Uh, as I mentioned, we had measurements data, data of wind speed and power output from each wind turbine of Hibera One Wind Farm. The wind speeds corresponds to measurements taken at rotor height. Uh, the measured data covered the period of years from 2014 to 2018. So the first step was that we performed was to operate the empirical power curve of all these wind turbines. Um, I will refer to empirical power curve as the curve, uh, the power curve formed by the plotting um, of the measured wind speeds and power output data of each wind turbine. So in this figure, uh, uh, we can see the empirical power curve of the six wind turbines of this uh, wind farm. Um, so each row indicates the number of the uh, wind turbine and each column indicates the, the year of the measurements. Also the color of the, of the dots indicates the probability of occurrence the, of, of these wind speeds. And the red line uh, indicates the power curve of the manufacturer of the wind turbines. Also, in this figure, we can see that most of the wind turbines don't operate at, uh, at their nominal uh, power, and they operate most of the time in the between the wind, the cut in wind speed and the rated wind speed. And yes. Also, from this figure, we can observe that the wind turbine number six in 2015 uh, has practically no useful information on the empirical power curve. So this case was omitted in the subsequent analysis. And with the above, in, in order to analyze the performance of era five analysis data for, for this particular site located on an island, this methodology was followed which consists of performing a series of comparison between the measured data and the era data. So first, uh, the era five wind speeds were obtained from the same location of the wind turbines of the Hibara One wind farm um, for the same year of measurement, where the wind speeds were extrapolated to the rotor height uh, of the wind turbine using the dynamic alpha's method, uh, a variant of the power law profile extrapolation technique. Once the measure, measured and eight of five wind speeds were obtained at the same height, uh, comparisons were made considering three, three scenarios. Uh, the first was era five wind speed had a bias, so it is necessary to apply a bias correction. The second one is measured data obtained contain of layers. So it's necessary to apply a filter to the empirical power curve. And the third one is uh, the manufacturer's power curve do not reflect the actual behavior of the wind turbines. So it is necessary to apply a fit to the empirical power curve. In, in the following slides, I, I will show you the results obtained. So I will explain the reasons of each of these scenarios. Let's start with the first one. By direct comparison, the measured measure and RFI wind speeds for all wind turbines and years 
we observe that the RFI speeds tend to overestimate low wind speeds and underestimate high wind speeds. This can be seen in, in, in this figure where the X axis corresponds um, to the uh, wind speed and measured wind speed and the Y axis to, to the RFI wind speeds. Also the, the red line indicates the the line y equal to x, the, the dashed black line indicates the cuckoo plot, and the, the yellow line uh, shows the, the adjustment of the data. Uh, so the, the method that we use to to the, the, the bias correction was the quantile quantile method, which was used by by Hernandez. Uh, to verify uh, the the above about the the overestimates and underestimates the the wind speed, uh, we obtained these these plots uh, that show the correlation coefficient between the measure and eight at five wind speeds before and after applying the bias correction uh, to the RFI wind speed. In these figures, the, the X axis indicates the year of the data and the Y axis indicates the wind turbine number of the wind farm. The color of the cells indicates the value of the correlation coefficient between the wind speed. So the dark color indicates a high value of the correlation coefficient and a lighter color indicates a low value of the correlation coefficient. From this figure, we observed that when the bias correction was applied, the correlation coefficient increased. However, this increase was not very significant. Um, so despite this, it was decided to use the set of wind speeds from Erafite with bias correction for, for future comparisons. Uh, if we remember, when we visualized the empirical power curve of the wind turbines, we noticed the existence of, of layers, so as power or speed values that didn't don't correspond to the trend. Thus, in, in order to reduce the errors associated with these outliers of the measured data, we decided to apply a filter to the empirical power curve. For this proposed, uh, the methodology uh, proposed by Villanueva was used, which consisted of discard values from the empirical power curve according to pre-established limits. So in this figure, we can observe the, the empirical power curves on the filter was applied. Again, we compare the measure and RFI wind speeds before and after apply, applying the filter to the empirical power curve. Uh, it was observed that the correlation coefficient of the wind speeds decreased in most of the cases. Uh, in spite of this, when observing the correl correlation coefficient of the measure powers and those calculated and uh, the powers calculated from the era five wind speeds, we know that these values increase in most of the cases. In this figure, uh, we can see as in the case of the winter wind speeds, we can uh, see in the y-axis the, the year of the measurements and the, the x-axis, sorry, the x-axis, the year of the, uh, the data, and the uh, y-axis, the number of the wind turbine. The, the darker green color indicates a high value of uh, correlation coefficient and a layer uh, green in color indicates a, a lower um, value of coefficient of correlation. So uh, the, when, when we apply the, the cover, the empirical power curve filter, is the, um, we can observe that most of the, in most of the cases, the correlation coefficient increase um, considerably. Now, uh, the capacity factors calculated from the measure power and wind speeds 
of era five before and after applying the fighters to the empirical power curve were also compared. So as we show in this, in this figure where the x-axis corresponds to the year of measurements and the y-axis to the wind turbine number of the wind farm, the value of H cells indicate the percentage error between the plant factor, the capacity factor, sorry, calculated from the measure power and wind speeds of era five. The blue color indicates that the error is positive. For example, that the value of the capacity factor calculated from the measure power is greater than the, the capacity factor calculated from the wind speed. Um, red color indicates that the error is negative. For example, the value of the capacity factor calculated from the measure power is smaller than the capacity factor calculated from the um, wind speed of era five. A light colors indicates small errors, while dark colors indicates uh, large errors. So from this figure, we can see that by applying the filter to the empirical power curve, the percentage errors of the capacity factors of most of the wind turbines of the wind farm decrease considerably. Now, since the empirical power curves presents different behaviors from the measurements um, power curve, it was decided to analyze the empirical, the impact, sorry, of the power curve that represents the real behavior of the wind turbines in the calculation of the power production. So in this way, um, an adjustment was made to the filter empirical power curve data, which was subsequently used to evaluate the era five wind speeds and calculate the capacity factors. In this figure, we can observe the filter empirical power curves. The red line indicates uh, the manufacturer power curve and the black line indicates the adjustment made. Uh, this adjustment was performed using three parameter logistic exponential model, 3 PLE, proposed by Villanueva. Due to it, it shows low parameter, parameter requirements and uh, low errors. So when we compare again the measured powers and the, the powers calculated from the era five wind speeds before and after applying uh, uh, the power curve fit, we can see the, in these figures that the correlation coefficient increase. However, such in uh, this increase uh, was not significant. Despite the, of this, uh, when we compare now the, the capacity factors calculated from the measure powers and era five wind speeds before and after applying the, the adjustment to the empirical power curve, uh, we can see that the percentage of errors were considerably reduced. So from all of this, it was found that era five is able to reproduce the wind speed of Hibara one wind farm. Um, also the bias correction applied to the era five wind speed data allowed to increase um, a little the correlation between the measured and era five wind speed data. Also, the filter applied to the empirical power curve caused a decrease in the correlation of the measure and era five wind speed data since most of the outliers of the empirical power curve were exploded to the erroneous values of the measure power. And despite this, the applied filters allow to improve the correlation of the measured powers and the uh, powers calculated from the era five wind speed data, uh, as well as to considerably reduce the percentage errors of the capacity factors obtained from these data sets. Also, the power curve fit apply show no significant change into correlation of the measured and calculated powers from the era five wind speeds data, however, for the capacity factors obtained from the measured power and the era wind speed data, the empirical power curve uh, fit allowed to reduce the percentage errors. And it was found that era five is, is able to reproduce the wind resource in the Hibara wind farm. It, we decide to use uh, this analysis data to obtain 
wind speeds and capacity factor maps in order to identify potential wind generation sites in, in Cuba. So the, the, first, the first step of, for that was study the impact of changing the time scale of the RFI wind speeds. Uh, for this, we compare the measured and RFI wind speeds by performing a uh, average uh, every one hour, six, uh, 12, uh, one day and a uh, one week. So as we can see in these figures, at the time, mm, at, uh, the time scale increase, the correlation coefficient between these data sets uh, of wind speeds also increase. So uh, we decide to use a one day average since it in this case shows the, the, the increase of the correlation coefficient with more significant. With the above, uh, using an available period of 39 years of RFI uh, wind speed um, and a one day average. These seasonal average wind speeds maps were obtained from the, the whole island of Cuba. Um, in this, each color box indicates the average wind speed. So the darker color uh, indicates high, higher values of wind speed. Um, also from these maps, we observe that the winter is the season of the year that shows the highest wind speed values, while summer was the, the, the season the, of the year that shows the lowest, the lowest values. Also, uh, we can observe that the coastal areas uh, in the north of, northeast of the island had the highest, the highest wind speed value, while the southern and the western areas had the, the lowest values. Also, using the power curve of the wind turbines installed in Kibara One Wind Farm, we and the RFI wind speeds for the 93, 99, uh, for the 39 years with mm, 24 hour average or a one day average, uh, seasonal uh, um, capacity factors maps were obtained for the entire uh, island of Cuba. Um, uh, in these maps, uh, light green colors indicates uh, low plan, low capacity factors values while darkest green colors indicates high capacity factor values. From these maps, uh, as we can see, uh, we can observe that the areas with the highest wind power production are mostly located on the north of and east of, uh, of the coast of the island. Um, also, uh, the regions with the lowest wind power production were located mainly in the western and southern regions of the Iceland. These regions coincide with the areas of high and low wind speeds values, respectively. Uh, also, the regions coincide with the sites selected for new wind projects in the country, which will be located mainly in the eastern part of the country. Now, observing the Average wind speed distribution of the, the region, it was observed that the wind speed with the highest probability of occurrence is around seven meters per second, uh, as we show, as we can see in this in this figure. And also uh, uh, we decided to evaluate a second technology designed to operate at low lower wind speeds, for example, a class a wind turbine class three in order to compare the power production with, with respect to the 8, 850 kilowatts Gamesa uh, wind turbine currently installed in, in the wind farm of Hibara One. Um, this new technology or the alternative technology uh, was the late wind uh, LCW77 we, with 850 kilowatts of nominal power, 
Um, also, in uh, here we can observe that the the, the power curves of both wind turbines. Um, we can observe that the late wind wind turbine has a uh, good in wind speed of three meters per second, a rate wind speed of eleven meters per second, and a cut off of twenty five meters per second. And also, it is a, a wind turbine class number three. Sorry. For, the, for my mistake. Um, in this way, evaluate, evaluating the new power curve and performing uh, the difference between the, the capacity factors of the, of the seasons, uh, the different maps were obtained for the whole island of Cuba from, from this. Um, uh, as I showed you in this figure, uh, it was observed that the difference between the capacity factor was always positive. That is that the capacity factor of the late wind wind turbine was higher than that of Gamesa wind turbine in most of the Iceland. Also, it was observed that the regions with the greatest uh, differences in the capacity factors throughout the years were the northern and eastern coast of the Iceland, while the regions located on the western and mainly southern coast show well the smallest difference throughout the year. Also, uh, we observed uh, that these differences mm, were maximum during the win winter seasons when wind speed values were the highest of the year. Uh, also, the, the season of the year with the smallest difference uh, was summer, which was the season with the lowest wind speed values. Uh, this seemed to indicate that the late wind turbine, wind turbine, uh, given its technical characteristics, took better advantage of the wind resource available in, available in Cuba than the Gamesa wind turbine. Also, in order to have a quantitative comparison, uh, nine sites around the island of Cuba were selected to analyze the behavior of these uh, capacity factor differences. The location of these selected, site, selected sites can also be seen in, in this figure, where the point marked with the legend G1 corresponds to the location of the Hibara 1 wind farm. For this comparison, uh, the these spider graphs <laughs> was made, where the green dots and lines indicate the seasonal uh, capacity factor values of the late wind turbine, while the blue dots and lines indicate the seasonal plant the capacity factor values of Gamesa wind turbine. Uh, from these figures. Uh, it was observed that for all the selected sites, the capacity factor obtaining from the late wind and wind turbine was always higher than the Gamesa wind turbine. Also, it was observed that the, the maximum difference between the capacity factors in all of the selected sites occurred in winter season, while the smallest difference uh, occur, uh, occurs in the summer season. It was also observed that the sites located on the north and east coast, uh, the point, the sites G1, S1, S2, S3, and S7, show with, in general, the highest values of capacity factor in all seasons of the year. Of this, the, the site S, S7, uh, located on the, in, on the south, southern part of the coast, the east coast, show the highest capacity factor values throughout the year. In contrast, uh, uh, sites located on, on the west and south coast, as well as uh, the sites S4, S5, S6, S8, and S9, generally uh, show the lowest plant factor values throughout the, the year. Uh, of this, the, the site S6, located of the south coast of the Iceland, obtained, obtained the, the lowest values throughout the year. With this, uh, it was found that 
a wind turbine with the characteristics of the late wind uh, class three model uh, was able to take better advantage of the wind resource available in Cuba. Uh, with all of that, uh, it was validated that the regional uh, region with the greatest potential for wind power production corresponds to the east coast and part of the north of the island. Also, it was obtained uh, that the season of the year with, <clears throat> with highest wind water production is in winter, uh, just when the wind speeds magnitude uh, in that region represents the higher values of the year. In addition, by proposing and evaluating a wind turbine class three, such as late wind was, uh, uh, a, a better use of the wind resource available through the island was obtained. This, uh, this in comparison with the Gamesa G, G52 model, we, uh, with that bus that were installed in wind farm uh, Hibara one, and with, uh, which are uh, a wind turbine of class one. So from all, all of these, uh, uh, we can satisfactorily conclude that it was possible to perform an analysis that allowed way to know the necessary practice uh, to use era fiber analysis data as a useful tool for wind energy application in an Iceland environment. So, with, with that, we, we could fulfill uh, the general objective of this work. And finally, I would like to, to thank Dr. Carlos Alberto, Rodriguez, Alberto Lopez and Dr. Osvaldo Rodriguez for their advice in the relation of this work, as well as the collaboration with the Dr. Ernesto Joel Fariñas, who was a key pipe piece uh, for the relation of this project. I would also like to thank to Wind Energy Group of the Instituto de Energía Renovables for all the support provides, as well as the CONACYT for the economic support to allow with me to develop this project. And that's all. Uh, thank you very much for joining uh, this presentation and thank you very much for your attention. And thank you very much, uh, Samuel, for a very interesting presentation. and. Um, Again, um, I would like to, to invite the audience to, to make questions or comments on, on uh, Samuel's presentation, please. Either you can go ahead and open your, your video camera or uh, you can write your question in the chat, whichever way uh, you prefer, you, you're welcome to, to use. Uh, Oscar Martinez, please go ahead. Hi, hi Samuel. Uh, thank you very much. It was a very, very nice presentation. Uh, I have a question about the, uh, the last bit. Um, you say that, or you, what you found was that the power production was uh, best in winter season. Do you, do you know, do you understand, or do you know why, why that, why that is, or? Uh, yeah, essentially um, that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Oscar. Uh, if, if I remember, uh, it's because the the flux of the the wind in used in in December comes from the north to the equator. So in in that season is when we can in, uh, uh, yeah have the highest uh, values of wind speeds. Uh, especially in that zone of the of the of the Iceland of Cuba. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Any anyone else? Uh, Osvaldo Rodriguez, please go ahead. Yes, thank you very much, Sam, for your presentation. Um, one thing that is very interesting is that you found that. Um, uh, the, 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 the selection of the technologies and very key issue in this uh, very critical task to, to make this uh, uh, wind power uh, 
um, solutions uh, to be feasible. Uh, so you need to select a proper technology. Can you comment a little bit more, please, about how um, uh, how the opportunities of areas to 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 put wind turbines in Cuba? Um, uh, you, did you detect uh, when you select a different technology? Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much for your question, Dr. Osvaldo. Um, well, when I was uh, evaluating uh, different power groups of different uh, wind turbines, we choose uh, some of the maybe 50 kilowatts of nominal power. And uh, after that, when, with that, I observed that, I observed that, yeah, in fact, the, the capacity factor is, is, is the highest, but the energy production is, uh, is I don't know, lower. So uh, we, we need to, to find a, a, a point with the balance, with the, the, yeah, with high capacity factor, but also with high energy production. Um, I think, um, based on this study, that the regions with the high uh, potential of wind power generation are the, the coast in the north and the, in the east. Um, and yeah, if, when I was uh, doing the, the, my research about the, the wind farms that the government in Cuba has planning to, to install the, the, wind, the new wind farms, uh, some of these uh, sites uh, do, not, um, do not include the, some of the, the regions that I found that can be a good opportunity for wind power generation. Thank you, Sam. You're welcome. Okay, and, and anyone else wanting to, to make a question or comment on Sam's presentation? Okay, well, uh, given that uh, we are just uh, in, in time for, for uh, closing down the, the session, I think that we will leave it in there.